What's up guys? This video is a little bit late. We recorded it just like a day or two after we got the second trailer for Spiral, but the conversation was a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoy it. Why don't we just jump right in? Jigsaw copycat. This is gonna go sideways fast. What's up everybody? Today, as you saw in the title, you saw in the thumbnail, we are back again with another Real Talk podcast. This time, yet again, talking about Spiral from the Book of Saul. But with good reason, because we got the second trailer just a couple of days ago from the point that this video is going to be coming to your airwaves. And I thought that that was genuinely exciting enough. Not just that, but getting it a week earlier and the first true cinema only experience the thing that's going to be starting the summer season is apparently the ninth entry in this all franchise you know that's that's kind of weird uh but rejuvenating everything after a year hiatus with covid and everything so i thought that this is enough to give us a round table discussion to discuss the trailer our genuine thoughts about the movie the feel of the trailer, how they're selling it, and just some thoughts and speculation about what we're going to be seeing in this movie and maybe the sequel, if my guests want to go that far, who knows? Uh, but anyway, guys, I have with me yet again, they've both been on various ones of these podcasts, but once again, say hello to Charlotte from Charlotte's Web of Lies. Would you say hello? Hello. Okay. <laughs> and also, again, we have Dallas from Deadass Serious. Why don't you say hello? How's it going, guys? So with the introductions out of the way, I wanted to just jump right into thoughts and feelings about this particular trailer. I've already made a video on my channel discussing things here and there, but because work is what it is, I couldn't put as much discussion or just thought into it as I might otherwise would have. So I'm going to save that for this video, but let's start with Charlotte. How did you think about this trailer when it first opened up? I mean, obviously with last year's trailer, Lionsgate had to do their best to resell the movie to people who might've forgotten about it. So first initial impressions with it. Uh, my first initial impression was very positive. Uh, and we, like when you, you, it's funny, you said that uh, people might've forgotten about the previous trailer. I kind of had, and like the tone of this trailer is like so much stronger. I kind of did entirely forget that other trailer as I was watching it. And like, I don't know, I'm like, I sort of got like rehyped for it. Whereas I've been sort of like a little negative in my feelings about like how excited I am uh for the most part but this this new trailer like really uh has me a little more optimistic nice and i kind of forgot about the last one but the fact that it's been a year since we first heard about it it's felt like a sick game on its own you know <laughs> <laughs> it, it definitely has it's it, it is interesting to me that they have decided to kind of go full Jigsaw. When it comes to releasing this in theaters, I have speculated a little bit about whether or not they were going to sell the movie. I don't know who would be interested in buying it or for how much, but to me, it's one of those films that is right on the cusp of being cheap enough to put in theaters where you kind of test the waters. I can only imagine that they've spent a lot more money on this movie to the point where they're going to need a bigger success than what they had with Jigsaw. And it just, that kind of feels a little off to me considering the way international markets are split and how kind of crippled domestic markets have been for theater openings over the last couple of weeks. But it does seem to be in a position where nothing else is coming out. So you have your ninth film in a franchise probably going to top the box office for two or three weeks in a row. Horror movie at that during May season. Asterisks or not, that is an interesting, you know, little mark in its favor. <laughs> and certainly thing, something that's probably going to appease the people who paid money to get this out there. Uh, but in terms of the movie's trailer itself, I agree. I hadn't so much forgotten about the first trailer as I had just kind of started to lose interest in waiting for it. And then this trailer peaked it a lot more than I was even anticipating when they announced it was coming out or that the trailer was dropping in less than 24 hours. And that's because 
I feel like it gave us more of a sense of what this movie is going to be than any Saul trailer movie has since the first one. They elaborated a little bit more on the stories, the character. They really showed attitude with kind of pronouncing the killer, how he's toy toying with everybody, and also having a spiral theme song played in there. And it's not just the Charlie Clouser music. It's It's really different. And I think that's going to resonate with people, even if it is just another Saul movie. I'll also say this, and I don't know like if the general fandom hates that like the Tobin Bell voice is apparently, you know, gone but forever, but uh, I, I like the new the new like jigsaw tape voice. It feels very like deranged and like the sort of like wannabe jigsaw, like I don't know, it it feels a little more uh, like we're gonna see some like crazy stuff. Right. It feels a little androgynous, too. Like, you won't know if it's actually a female or a male. I agree with that. I was actually going to ask, like, d did you question that at all? I've gotten a couple comments of people speculating it sounds like a female voice. And it, it might be the female cop who's intertwined with this and the person making the tapes just because, like what Dallas said, it, you don't know. Maybe it's the... Uh the girlfriend that his like buddy cop has from the first trailer that's my that's my hard call <laughs> she's tired of those tuesdays right. <laughs> <laughs> no uh no I, you know i i like that too i like the fact that we're getting a little bit away from the tobin bell voice because you it, obviously jigsaw itself is a little divisive and as much as I've said on this channel that I really like that movie for what it is, I also agree that what Logan did by creating the tapes with John's voice is the probably the dumbest leap of logic, faith, whatever I've ever done for a movie. It's like it's yeah. like the uh, the voice masker in Scream Three, how it just magically has everybody's. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Where he's like. Every uh, he they showed the uh, Cindy's brother using it, and he just somehow sounds like all the other ghost face, despite his different voice. Right, and then even the mom's voice somehow. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's just on the it's on the Jigsaw Apprentice resume. You have to survive a test. You have to appreciate life. You have to have an, uh, a passion for audio engineering. Oh, right. and you just like just engineering in general. I mean. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's kind of a That's joke. A must. Yeah, it's kind of a joke. But like, how did Amanda learn how to do all that stuff? There's no indication oh. that she was that. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, I always thought that like Jigsaw like taught her, but then like you really think about the timeline, and it's like she's been making like like six months maybe. Like she's making these like super elaborate traps. It's it, it's it's pretty funny. And Hoffman also, you know, yes, it's dumb that he was able to create the pendulum trap beforehand, but considering the fact that he was delving into this depression, you can imagine he took much longer, like that whole five years to like figure out something. I mean, the thing that gets me about that one is that at that point in the timeline, at the time that we knew it was just Cecil. So like he heard about some dude put a guy in a knife trap and he was like, ah, I bet that this like big pendulum thing would probably be the same MO. Yeah, in the timeline that we know, and I've been asking Josh this like off and on, uh, both in my interview with him, in DMs, and just in the uh, discussions we have on Twitter, is like, you really need to address this. Like, I don't even care. Just address the fact that Hoffman made Billy, despite the prototype Billy that we see with uh, John, because in terms of the timeline, it's the only thing that makes sense. You have to kind of imagine that there were other traps that we didn't see. They didn't even clear that plot hole up in the seventh film when they had all these traps that we hadn't seen. It was weird. Yeah, you never knew when they took place. They just <laughs> happened. Yeah, John John did a lot in, in just a couple of months, like in, I guess, a year and a half, two years at most. Um, oh yeah, he was busy. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, we're we're getting way off topic. In terms of Spiral, though, uh, we've talked about the voice, we've talked about the difference of tone, the fact that there is this theme song that's not just the Charlie Clouser music. I, I really, I do really like that. I guess another thing I just want to ask uh, you two, obviously, you're fans of the franchise, you knew going in that not only is Spiral the ninth entry in the franchise, but 
also Chris Rock and Samuel Jackson are going to be the main focus of the movie, the selling point. But people who don't, can you speculate like how the general audience is going to react to this? Especially those who forgot that it was coming out or that we even got a first trailer to begin with? Uh, I, th I think it, they, it might come across to them as a little bit more like humor buddy copy, especially Chris Rock being a comedian. But also, I don't know, like the vibe I got from Samuel L. Jackson's character in the trailer was like a little bit goofy. Like, you know, he's kind of like that sassy sort of like... Like, oh, you don't know what you got into, son. So I, th I think that it might come across a little more silly to, like, the average audience. But um, I don't know. Like, I, mean, I, I certainly thought that for the first trailer. And I think that's still a little bit there in the second trailer. But I don't know. I, th I think that it might, like, come across as, like, a horror comedy, you know? It's interesting to me because when I saw the way they introduced Samuel Jackson in the movie trailer, I was like, haven't we seen Samuel L. Jackson do this role, like, at least like this kind of the same <laughs> father role at least a couple times over the last couple of years i instantaneously thought of shaft the movie that came out like a couple of years ago uh fantastic yes. film i loved it. i actually really enjoyed it for what it was but uh kind of the same despondent alcoholic father who's just kind of living in a slum area it's the same <laughs> it's the exact same character arc uh, or at least introduction so yeah i, I get what you're coming from and I also thought of the hitman's bodyguard but but also because not only are all three of these lionsgate movies but as much as i do l like and feel like this is a big enough shake-up to get people's attention and i do want to see what chris rock has to offer i feel like he's kind of the worst part of the trailer i like maybe it's just the way it was edited or the the tension of this the scene isn't there when he's sitting around yelling about things being a diversion, nobody can trust, and all this other stuff. It's like, it's just not coming across as genuine to me. What comes across as more genuine is the first bit that we get in the first trailer they gave us last year, where he's talking about, you know, Tuesdays versus Saturday nights and all that other stuff. Like, that's, that's a lot more natural to his character. And I feel it's going to be his biggest selling point in the movie where. Yeah, it might not be as dramatic as it was, but he kind of comes across more of like a Lee Winnell character type, uh, Adam character type from the first Saul film, where it's more, the, the humor sticks with you more than the tension. Yeah, uh, I, I kind of agree. You know, I feel like he's channeling Osmosis Jones a little bit. Uh, that, was, that was the kind of vibe I got, you know? How can I catch this guy? If there's nobody on the boss, I can trust! And, and, you know, sticking sticking with this, and I'm just going to leave my cards out on the table. I'm not sure if y'all have any other thing to add, but in terms of everybody else in this movie, I, I don't know. <laughs> like, uh, I know that I know there are some people that have kind of made splashes in terms of like, oh, I'm going to be in this movie, I'm going to be in this movie, but I don't feel like it's worth talking about anybody else besides the two biggest selling points. Yeah, no, I mean, I agree. I, I, I mean, I have prospect notice. I'm not the best person to ask, but like, I, I didn't even really recognize anybody else from the trailer. There was the Max Mingella, uh, spelling or uh, pronunciation on the last name, but uh, the guy from The Handmaid's Tale. That's the only thing I recognized him from. See, I haven't gotten a chance to watch that show yet. I've been, I've been actually meaning to, but now it's on its fourth season, and you know how shows get away from you. Right, it's heavy. <laughs> and and you know, also uh, kind of jumping back, that kind of reminds me. I also didn't get a chance to watch season four of Fargo, which I wanted to before this movie came out because it would kind of prime me to see what Chris Rock is capable of in a more of a dramatic... Cop role. Cop, yeah, dramatic cop, but also Fargo has a sense of dark humor. So I feel like it was like the perfect primer. Maybe I need to sit down and watch like whatever it is, like 10 episodes of that before I go see this, or maybe that would ruin the experience of you know the first viewing of this film. I'm not sure. Okay, now that that's kind of out of the way, all this, what were your thoughts on the trailer and everything? I guess the thing that people came here to listen to and I'm most excited to talk about is just speculation, not only of what this movie is going to give us, but 
like I said at the beginning, if you have any inclination as to what a potential sequel or continuation of the franchise would be after this, uh, I've discussed this in videos before, so I'm just going to lay it out here so y'all can speculate on my speculation or just on the trailer itself. But given what we saw in the trailer, it looks, and I'm not 100% sure on this, but what we've seen in still, stills, what we saw in the trailer, and what they continuously hint at the whole time is we're going back to the bathroom. I've argued in the past that you know, there's no real indication of anything, and I'm pretty sure when we talked to Josh during our interview that he was under the same impression that I was as well, that there was nothing in Jigsaw that spelled out one way or the other that the bathroom had been found. Now, a lot of people point to Eleanor's hacksaw that they say that she got from the bathroom, but I always said it was like a replica. We have the video footage that we have from the very first film. All of that's on the Jigsaw Rules website. So yeah, that explains that, at least to me. It kind of sweeps under the rug and leaves it to, like it leaves that can to be kicked down the road, whether or not they found anything. But one of the things we know from this movie is they have this billboard where they have Obby, they have the furnace trap and all these things indicating the Saw 2 house which would, at least to me, indicate that if they know where the Saw 2 house is, they know where the bathroom is. So we're going to go back to the bathroom. The only question is, if that's true, when are we going there? Is it going to be in a flashback? Or is it going to be in modern day? I guess it can be both. But there's scenes in the movie that make me feel like it's a flashback. The SWAT team bursting down the door that is in a somewhat of a room that looks similar to the hallway leading up to the bathroom as well as flashback, or what appears to be a flashback of uh, Chris Rock's Zeke in what appears to be, I guess, a cop hat, a cop uniform, not, not a detective. His father has a renowned, like a renowned career as a detective in this area, and it's been a decade or more, or whatever, since John passed and all the events of the first seven films have passed. So... To me, it makes sense that we're dealing with a flashback at some point in the movie, going into the bathroom, and then potentially answering the question of what happened to Hoffman, and then that playing into the story in some way or form. So, uh, Charlotte, what are your, th I guess I'll start with you, what, what are your thoughts, not only on that, but just also speculation that you want to get us into from the trailer itself? I mean, as far as the bathroom goes, I mean, I don't know, maybe they'll go back to it. <laughs> I don't, I don't really have uh, strong feelings about it. Like, I think that if the killer is, like, part of the Jigsaw Rules sort of uh, Saw 7 uncut cult kind of, you know, sort of vein, then maybe, the, the, like, they assign some sort of, like, almost religious significance to that site and will go there for some reason related to Chris Rock's game. I don't know. But... <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I, I, I kind of feel like if they do a flashback to the bathroom, it's going to be pretty forced. And I'm, I, I don't think I would be down for it. Like, this is like a whole new character. They don't have anything to do with Jigsaw, probably. I mean, if they do, then I think I'm, I would also be disappointed about that. <laughs> we could all agree with the fact that we don't need any more people knowing John being an apprentice. Yeah, I don't need my 12th secret apprentice. Um... So, you know, like, I, I, I really hope they don't have a, a bathroom flashback. If they go to the bathroom, fine. If they see Hoffman, I think they're just going to see it. We're just going to see a corpse with a blue coat, honestly. Which, I don't, that's not the decision I would make, but I think that's the decision they would make, frankly. It feels to me like this is going to be something of a, like a soft reboot. Like, it's, it's clearly in the same continuity but uh, I don't know. I feel, I feel like it's like the vibe that I get from the trailer is just that it's not going to have like flashbacks to like the secret scene where we learned about Amanda's nephew or whatever. Uh, it's, it, it feels like it's trying to kind of like do its own thing with like the Saw aesthetic more so than like uh, going deeper into the lore. If they do tie it back into the old stuff then I think it's probably going to be pretty like 
exclusive to the early Saw movies. And I, I don't really have any like specific things to point to towards that. That just kind of like the vibe I get is that like we're not going to see the, the secret meaning behind the the scene from Jigsaw or Saw Seven or anything like that. Yeah, we're not going to be we're, we're not going to be taking this movie to tie up who those other pig mask people were helping Gordon, right? Yeah, yeah. I I don't know. I I, I feel like it's going to be pretty fresh. That's like my my main speculation. Not new continuity, but like a clean break, like reset of the story what about you dallas oh my god uh i took notes and everything when i watched the trailer <laughs> oh great uh, jump into it you're just starting off it with like how funny is it going to be like i feel like everybody's going to be asking themselves that um is this going to lead to another franchise are we going to get a single motherfucker from samuel L? oh yeah uh, we, they already they 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 put it in the they put that in the first trailer right then that answers that question <laughs> <laughs> We're definitely going to get that. Yeah, exactly. And I'm that much more excited now. I didn't watch the uh, the trailer that came out a year ago recently, so that entirely skipped my mind. <laughs> <laughs> as far as like what it could be about, um, the synopsis online is talking about someone unleashing a twisted form of justice. So first question is who was wronged and how. Mm-hmm. Um, why are spirals their calling card? Um, like there, I know they were on Billy's cheeks, uh, the puppet. It was also on like the uh, the merry-go-round trap from Part Six. Mm-hmm. Um, so I mean, spirals have always been kind of prevalent, um, but the fact that whoever it is knows that that is kind of a signifier of John. It's like the new calling card, but I feel like only a cop would know that, which makes me think it's someone in the precinct who is the new copycat. Um, and then there's going to be a few plot lines to explore just based off of what we've seen. Um, there's the backstory with Samuel L. and Chris Rock and why they're estranged. The inciting incident that made the copycat target the cops that they are, um, which I feel like they might be connected. Like, um, it looked like there was a sting op or something that went bad in the trailer. Like, that might be a flashback. And then just how the killer knows Jigsaw. Like, there's a lot of stories that they have to tell. Um, so I'm, I'm just excited to see how it plays out, honestly. I agree with you. I feel like there are certain things that we're seeing in the trailer that have to be flashbacks. As I already said, there's the scene where Chris Rock looks like he's in a cop outfit. And for whatever reason, right. that that maybe it's just the cop outfit, rookie cop, the idea of a more veteran cop, which is his father, which they're going to have mm-hmm. to do enough to justify, right? They have to justify right. why he's this big guy in the the precinct and everyone thinks about him or knows about him or something and that's why my mind jumps to finding the bathroom whether or not we see hoffman or we get any indication of whether he's not alive or something it's like after what hoffman did to the police force him tracking down and finding and quote unquote ending it or whatever uh, Mm -hmm. would give him some recognition in my opinion but there's these scenes that I'm not entirely sure where they fit. And that's kind of the intrigue of the movie is I I, I think it's pretty clear based on what we've seen that this is probably the biggest in terms of traps that we've ever seen. I mean, we're dealing with a subway train um, or just a train. I'm not, I guess, I, I, I guess I'm not entirely sure, but we're also dealing with hooks or whatever it is uh, with Samuel Jackson's character. Oh, yeah, he's like hanging out upside down. Yeah, and yeah. just these weird things. And it's it's weird to me that we're going to be dealing with that type of stuff in what Charlotte was saying is kind of a, we're starting fresh. We're, we're jumping forward, we're starting fresh and we're doing something completely different. All right, but what if we're not? And yeah, his, his Samuel L. Jackson is a legend because he found the bathroom but maybe he didn't like kill hoffman maybe he like took hoffman in and like and in, like interrogated him and hoffman gave away all the like details about professor gordon and stuff and they broke up the jigsaw cult and that's why this person is trying to get revenge because they were part of the jigsaw cult boom i just came up with that <laughs> see like i can imagine I, I that's something i can definitely imagine like a saul nine if it was the legitimate saul nine doing it was like it makes perfect sense in that twisted, dumb continuity, but <laughs> but no, I, I agree with you that this is going to be different. It's going to be doing its own thing. 
I'm, I have been wondering for a year now, and it, I know it wasn't intentional other than this just being from the mind of Chris Rock. And Chris Rock, if you have seen his stand-up or some of his other films and stuff, he gets really ingrained in this concept of the black experience in America. And it feels like this movie, if it had come out in October of last year and somehow it was able to come out in theaters with the reality of last year seems kind of tailor-made for the moment uh right if 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 that makes sense to to y'all and for anybody listening the new billy is a pig cop right uh, yes it, it's it's like oh my gosh this is like the it, it, i don't it feels weird to say it's like it kind of feels like it's in this movie, Chris Rock and everything, however it turns out, had some kind of a, you know, the pulse in the Black Lives Matter movement before it blew up last summer. And not to say that it just it came out of nowhere last summer. This has been something that's brewing for, you know, the about half a decade now. So, yeah. So definitely, uh, and it's weird to me, and I'm wondering if that's going to play into the movie's theme and success. And I'm wondering, and I'm also wondering that because. This this is this really wouldn't be the first time the Saw movies have played into the cultural zeitgeist at the time to varying degrees of success. I think it's pretty hard to separate the boom of the franchise itself in the post 9-11 era where you had the concept of Guantanamo Bay, torture going on, kind of a cultural catharsis at the reality that we were living in our day-to-day -day lives and trying to ignore and how that play and i feel like those two things without going in too far to it because one i'm not researching it and this is just a discussion for people to have in the comment section below but those two things absolutely played off of each other and then we also had the healthcare debate going on in 2009 that Saul 6 still feels even more to this day more relevant than it otherwise would have been in any other context so it's it's interesting to me that you know for what it's worth and despite all the hate that it gets the Saul franchise definitely goes beyond above and beyond being culturally relevant even in its ninth entry so uh, that that's all I was thinking about when it comes to the new Billy puppet and all this stuff. It just seems kind of tailor made for the moment, and that's I'm sure intentional and kind of a happy accident in terms of the reality of the last year. I I think I think it's pretty spot on, you know. Um, and as a joke, I'm going to say uh, Elizabeth Warren is my guess for the new Jigsaw. You know, uh, woman. Uh, you know, pro universal health care, pro BLM. I think it all checks out. Yeah, that's a fair guess. <laughs> Could be anybody. <laughs> uh, but hey, hey, just to just to touch on really quick the fact that the new the new puppet. I'm going to call him Willie. Uh, he's a, <laughs> that's a good name. <laughs> that's a great name. He's, he's not only a pig. He, which again, it goes with just the happy accident. Like pigs were a part of the series before anybody thought to like make the connection to cops. Oh, well, uh, cops have been called pigs for decades. Exactly. And then um, the fact that it's a marionette now, it doesn't seem to be like a little ventriloquist. Um, it's always it's like every time you see it, it's either it was in the box when Chris Rock opened it, or it was um, strung up like a marionette when Samuel L was walking up on it which coincidentally is the same kind of a, it looks like the kind of trap that Samuel L's in himself, like he's a, a man-made marionette. Oh, that's actually good. Oh. Yeah, so I, I thought that was- might be something. I hadn't, I hadn't seen, I hadn't even thought about that. That, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, okay. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say on top of that other than good, <laughs> good catch. Uh, now, how does that play into the train trap? And that was another thing I, I took a note on um it looked like the the train trap looked like the trap itself was rigged into the dude's teeth mm. and it looked like from the far away shot that he was actually standing on a ladder so i'm thinking the whole thing of it is is that he has to either rip out his teeth either by pulling or by jumping off of that ladder before the train comes Ugh. 
I the only thing I I, I did see that yeah is attached to his teeth. They made a a show of uh, they made a show of letting us see it. I don't know right. how that plays into the overall story. To me, it kind of feels like based off of the very limited footage that we've gotten that this has to be the first trap in the movie uh, that we see. Yeah. That we see because, uh, because of the way that the first trailer starts, they're talking and they're called into a scene and that's just the the shot that they want to show us. So whether or not this movie takes the leap and does the opening trap before any of the other story gets on just to kind of cold open you into this world or if it decides to go in a more traditional story route where the trap will come naturally to the story is remains to be seen but i would i would actually go with the former uh not artistically but just because of the this you want to keep it still in the vein of the franchise and the cold opening traps is one of the things that people come to expect that reminds me i i actually i did have one theory about um one of the traps in the uh trailer and this was in the first trailer as well um and it's just a shot of chris rock um it seems like he's like you know in maybe the bathroom and he's like pulling up the hacksaw and he's like oh he got to cut off his foot i guess i don't think that's going to be a real trap because either that would happen in like the middle of the movie and it would be like a huge shifting point for the story or it would be like at the very end and i don't think that either one would be something that they would show so casually in the trailers i think that's a dream sequence it might be like a nightmare sequence when he learns that like jigsaw stuff is happening and then he like has like a dream about like oh my life jigsaw i don't know but something like that that's a good speculation just because that's one of the things they've been throwing out there a lot is these stills with chris rock bloody all over walking around like what appears to be just this manufacture like abandoned manufacturing site or whatever uh i don't know i i hadn't ever really assumed that that's not going to be in the movie in terms of an actual scene versus a a nightmare in fact I, i guess i guess it wouldn't be the first nightmare sequence trap that we've seen we saw jill yeah i get uh cutting four <laughs> with the boob goes <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. uh, yeah all the 12 year olds you had that on dvd <laughs> most pause movie most pause movie moments of 2010 um <laughs> but okay i no, i hadn't uh dallas what are your thoughts on that actually take a moment to talk about the it, it looks like he's chained his his arm is chained not his foot yeah, from what I'm seeing in the trailer, it looks like he got his arm is what's handcuffed in there. He was provided the hacksaw, which makes me think that the uh, one from Jigsaw was a copy and not the real one. And I did have a question as well as far as, like, Hoffman got put in the bathroom at the end of, what, seven? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And then we didn't hear anything about it in Jigsaw. So it makes me question, like, how are they going to answer that gap of time to where you know we had the first saws that introduced the bathroom and then at some point the cops find the house so they have to have found the bathroom and then it seems like it just became abandoned again so that's when hoffman gets put in it and then there's this huge gap that's what i was saying earlier is there's no indication in the first seven films that the the house was found or the bathroom in fact you see strom go into the house in five and it's been completely redone now, that could be answered in a lot of different ways. I'm not entirely sure one way or the other, but he definitely goes down there and you see the blood trail that's supposed to be from... At the time, I thought, oh, that's the blood trail that uh, Eric Matthews was leaving because, as we saw in 3, he yes. was like leaving a bloody p- trail. But no, apparently in the script and also continuity, that was Gordon's blood trail, which I've always considered yep. is the dumbest thing. But... I, I am a noted critic of bringing back Dr. Gordon for any real reason in the franchise other than just to appease fans who couldn't think of anything else. And apparently the writers right. couldn't either. <laughs> uh, and and I, feel, I feel like such a cynic saying that. I'm just saying. No, I definitely feel the same way. Like when they joked about it in the Saw 2 DVD commentary of like, oh, what if that guy that's like sewing the eyeball, what if that's Gordon? Because he limps. I was like... Well, that'd be funny, but, like, don't actually do that, please. Don't do that. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Yes. 
Hello, Detective Banks. When was the last time you saw your father? Frankly, I agree with Charlotte. I, I don't know if they need to go to their bathroom. It's just the most iconic thing, right? It's, it's the most iconic place, and you would be doing yourself a little bit of a disservice if you divorced yourself completely from the franchise without going to its most iconic location, especially when you're seemingly teeing yourself up to do it, whether it's in a flashback or whatever. Uh, yeah. Showing the Saw 2 house, specifically the Saw 2 characters, on a, a board somewhere in the police precinct kind of indicates that we're going to be seeing it maybe once. And there's there's footage in the trailer that makes it seem pretty clear, too. But I feel like that also does, going back, I do think that that also does lend itself a little credence to Chris Rock having a dream sequence where he has to cut off his arm and whether he can do it. I, I've never thought about that, and I'm going to be shocked if that's the reality of that scene because I feel like it's one of the more tantalizing images that they've given over both right. the trailers. And maybe they'll do it well. I don't know. Hey, if we do go to the bathroom, you think they're just going to show like a like a like a foot bone? You know, like it's just decayed so much. It's just it's just bones. It doesn't even look like real bones. It's just like a cartoon party city. <laughs> um, I, we saw, yeah. At this point, like you would have to show the bone, but it's been like a decade. Is it? And, like nobody ever went to pick it up. You know, Gordon knew where his foot was, and he didn't even want to clean that clean it up. Never went back for that. Like, <laughs> well, why would you? At the point that he was finally able to walk, like it would be dead. I suppose. I mean, not not for like repair or anything. I don't know. Back before saw. Uh, before Jigsaw came out, I always had this idea that like if they just did like a straight Saw 8, like continuing, like nothing ever, like there was never any gap, we'd get a scene of Dr. Gordon and someone would ask him like, so why, why, why'd you become a Jigsaw apprentice? And he'd be like, I left a piece of myself back in that bathroom and I'm not talking about the foot. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I don't know, I thought that he would like have some like emotional attachment to the foot. <laughs> oh, I agree. <laughs> Amanda kept the reverse bear trap around because it was like symbolic of how she became, how she like fixed her life in her mind. Put on her head, you know, that wasn't attached to her at one point. <laughs> it sounds like, it, from what it sounds like with her interaction with Lynn, it sounds like she remade it as a cathartic, uh, I, I, some as cathartic kind of dealing with that or. Oh yeah, because I guess the original was in the police custody, and that's the one that Hoffman put on Jill at the end of Seven. There's so many bear traps. I mean, I, I, I hope if there's one thing I really hope that we're done with, it's bear traps. Oh, I love the bear. I could go for bear traps all all year. No. <laughs> Release the, the 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 Lucas cut of all seven movies and just put more bear traps in. <laughs> CG them in. Uh... Yeah. It's just like yeah, like animals with the bear traps on and mm -hmm. stormtroopers <laughs> getting their heads blown up that would be great uh so, so i guess the what i will say kind of moving on do you think either of you for any reason do y'all think that tobin's going to play into this at all would it be a bad move to not even have like a voice cameo or something Ooh, i i don't know like for s setting aside the question of like whether it would like play well to audiences or whatever that's for marketing teams i don't know i'm not really interested in that but just for like me personally i would be fine if they didn't have any tobin bell appearance at all outside of that photograph uh like he i think that since saw 3d 10 years ago 11 years ago now i have thought oh, the interesting thing is that there's like this like sort of cult around his philosophy now and they're trying to sort of carry things forward beyond his death. He's created a legacy. He's immortal now, but like in a symbolic way. And I think it would be far more interesting if they were going to like keep this like intricately tied into the lore to explore that rather than have like a flashback that shows how he set this all up 12, 12 years ago or whatever. Sure. 
Sure. I mean, I don't want him to be the mastermind behind it for sure. Um, but I'm just saying. Oh, even like just like narratively, like if he's like emotionally tied into anybody, like I, I just I just don't want any of it. Like I love Tobin Bell. I love Jigsaw. But like I, I think that his legacy can live on without like needing to like have a, a fan service scene where he shows up and you sent, spend a split second thinking like, does he have a twin brother who faked his death? Oh, <laughs> uh, right. <laughs> I still persist. <laughs> That's what I thought when he showed up in Jigsaw. Just a tiny part of me was like, oh, God, twin brother. Oh, God. Uh, I hope not. My name is James Kramer. <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel like there have been enough movies that have paid service and tribute to the fact that he has this entire legacy. I feel like now it's time to focus on the fact that there are people who are now influenced by that legacy to where we can focus on them and know that he was an influence, but we don't need to see that he ate a tape 12 years ago covered in wax that was made for <laughs> who was going to be the new apprentice nowadays. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I appreciate the fact that, you know, of everything that he's done for the series and all that. But with that respect, I also want to see someone else have a chance to have that kind of legacy. That's, uh, that's well said. That was just a diversion to get us out of the precinct. The idea of this and its subtitle. I've speculated on this a little bit in the past. The idea of from the Book of Saul, which is weird. I, I don't I, I don't know if that's going to play into the movie at all. I hope it does because it's, it's intriguing to have the first official subtitle in a movie franchise this long be something that is playing uh, paying a lot of it is something that's paying a lot of tribute to the fact that there is a legacy and there's a continuation this story that they're not going to give up despite it being a bit of a reboot mm -hmm. do you how do you think that's going to play into it one of the things i've seen uh, one of the things i've seen a lot of people talk about in my comment sections and in t Twitter, especially, is if it's not John, there does need to be more of a connection. Uh, you know, like a lot of people want Hoffman back, a lot of people want Dr. Gordon back, uh, some people want Rig back, some people want somebody, even if it's a different actor playing a character that we know from one of the previous eight films. And, mm -hmm. and I kind of second that but i would go a little bit more abstract and say i want concepts i want ideas to be explored or i guess engines to be explored i like if if it the only connection is what charlotte was saying earlier that we go back and we have this legacy and it's jigsaw rules and we get to see the sycophants who love john and somebody's just taken that message a little too far in, in kind of the more sadistic realm than what Eleanor was kind of getting out on with Jigsaw. That would be interesting to me because that is the reality of what makes you immortal and playing also into the modern era where just because you have an idea, just because you have this philosophy doesn't mean that people are going to see eye to eye and they can use that to justify anything. Uh, right. So I know that was a mouthful, but I mean, thoughts on that. Do you think from the Book of Saul, characters and uh, characters' concepts need to be taken? And what would that be? And uh, frankly, what would you want from the sequel if that's the case? So I think it does, it kind of calls into question the fact of who the killer is and what their role is in this universe. So there's either they saw all this happen on TV and they are not involved with like cops or anything like that. And they formed their own view of, you know, John's philosophies and all that. We don't know what, what they put on TV for everyone to see as far as like why he did what he did or anything like that, which is why I, it kind of reinforces my thought that it's a cop who's doing this, mm -hmm. which would also lend, uh, it would lend to the idea that if they're a cop, they also have access to any evidence that was pulled from all of these cases back in the day. So if John actually did have a book, um, like I was watching a YouTube channel, uh, 3C Films, and he was talking about how on John's table in part two, when they bust in on him, 
that he has a book on his desk and that there was a chance that that could be what wound up in evidence that the killer came upon that they learned from, you know, it had unused traps or whatever, what have you in it. Um, that would, that I really took and like ran with it in my mind to where that would make the most sense. Um, if it is like quote unquote from a book of saw, um, I feel like the police would have the most knowledge as to how he actually operated and why he did. And so if there was a, a scorned cop who, you know, they, something happened with their partners, they got screwed over or something like that, like they might see John's form of vengeance or punishment as something that they could take and run with. So that would be my idea of how everything kind of starts, where the title from the Book of Saw would come from, and how, like how it could even be a book, like a literal book. I think that ties in well to the scene from the trailer where Chris Rock is like yelling at his whole uh, department, like, how can I uh, solve this case if I can't even trust anybody here? You know, if they have like reason to suspect early on that it's a cop and we just have to figure out like who it is. I'm going to push back on that just a little bit and say I'm tired of cops taking on the legacy of Saul uh, or, or John. I, Very fair. I, I like Hoffman. I like Logan, but we've seen it before. And one of the things the producer said, and what it, it kind of irks me because I feel like outside of everything that we've talked about, different different feel for the movie, kind of touching on the cultural zeitgeist, be it purposefully and also kind of uh, serendipitously, I, I they said in the commentary for Jigsaw that they were like laughing to themselves that they're kind of creatively bankrupt. <laughs> uh, be, be, just because they're still doing cop stuff. And it's like, oh, we always tell ourselves with each movie that like we're going to get away from the cop stuff, but we, we just can't. And it's like, yeah, I agree. Like, we don't need another procedural. Like, this is, this is something that can live in so many different worlds and so many different concepts that I understand good versus evil and you don't, you want the person to be caught or not caught, caught, whatever your cathartic thought over who the hero or who the villain is in any soul movie. But you know, it's, it's a world that more effortlessly lends itself to other realms of storytelling than your typical slasher film, like Friday the 13th, Halloween, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, all that other stuff, right? You can yeah. you can do a courtroom movie because evidence and telling the story, and you can go back in flashbacks that way to share, and there can be a twist. You can do a movie where you're dealing only with somebody who's a, like, not just a copycat killer, but you can do like a dark web thing where his fans get together or whatever. Now we're... but it does seem based on what we've seen in the trailers that not only is this another cop story, but we might also have a copycat that is a cop for one reason or another. And it's like, we've seen that before. My hard read is that it's going to be a, 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 a red herring and that it's not actually going to end up being one of the cops. We're going to spend like 80 of the 90 minutes or so uh, thinking that like, that's where it's going. Um, but then it's going to turn out that it's actually like Logan's proctologist who he's been training since actually before even Hoffman joined the team. Well, you know, it, you know what my thought is, is it's not going to be anybody like I, my hard read. I, I agree that my hard read is that it's not a cop and we're going to think it's a cop, but I, I can't escape the seven feel. I know that's what they said that they were going for, yeah. but can I just imagine, can you imagine if people would even be mad? And I feel like this would kind of play off the idea that you think a twist is coming, but they just do a John Doe thing where the killer just appears near the end of the movie and is like, ha you hadn't seen me before. <laughs> like <laughs> The twist is there's no twist. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, like that'd be interesting. But, like I, I can't get that scene out of the new trailer in my mind where Chris Rock has, they go into the, they go into the church and they're talking to this like one dude is like, who's that guy? I don't know. Cause I, I don't think it would be like, just like an officer on the force because, uh, you know, like we were talking about earlier, it seems like, um, whether this is intentional or not, it does seem like the character is anti-cop. 
Uh, so, you know, like, in the past, like, Jigsaw's targeted cops, there's always been, like, specific ones for specific uh, personal failings, but this one seems to be targeting, like, the police force as a whole. So I don't think that it would be a, just a police officer. But what about the idea, and this is just right off the top of my head, uh, y'all have any thoughts, what if it's not just one person? I would be so happy. Oh, same. I, I would, I would, oh my gosh, that would be so great. Especially if it was, like, related to the, like, Jigsaw Rules website or the the pig cult or anything like that. But if it wasn't, even if it was, if it was just, like, two people who were independently influenced by Jigsaw, I, I, I think that would be a much uh, stronger idea for where they could go than just, like, another apprentice yeah apprentices who could work together would be a refreshing change of pace as well going back to what i was talking about earlier i really wouldn't mind seeing eleanor back a, a character that we know but doesn't have to play a huge part in the movie mm -hmm. um i just i can't personally think of any other character that i feel could lend as much to a narrative that is trying to divorce itself as much as possible while still staying connected to what came before. She's someone who can kind of pop in and be like, oh yeah, John's like this or something and then like go away and nobody cares. Like you can't do that with, you know, you, you're not gonna bring back uh, Daniel Matthews. And you're not gonna bring back any of these characters that, And you know what, I hadn't, I had not thought about the idea of it being an actual book. <laughs> uh, I, I, I guess I understand where that's coming from, but I kind of take it in the sense that if there's going to be a sequel to this movie, I can't imagine, depending on, you know, survival of our main cast, whether or not Chris Rock or Samuel Jackson survive. And I can't imagine if they want to make a direct continuation, one of them has to survive because you need name recognition for the sequel to Spiral. You can't just pick up with the no-name actors that you have or just a completely different story. But the idea of A Book of Saul to me seems intriguing because inadvertently you can say that Jigsaw was the start of the, the new iteration of this franchise where you bring in a different creative force every single time to think of a culturally relevant issue and deal with characters who've taken up John's legacy to enact their twixted fantasies of the, the like whatever it is they're, they feel grieved on and you can bring in different actors. So, you know, this is, so Jigsaw was kind of the farewell to Tobin Bell and setting up the fact that, yes, there is one more person out there who does have connection to him, but we're not going to see him in the next movie, and we're not going to see him in the next movie after that, or even the next movie after that, but he's still out there, and we're going to be dealing with all these other stories because John did this stuff 10 years ago, and now we're in the age of information, the internet, and these crazy cult people and people who are super fans of him and go off and do their own things. I think that would be an interesting pitch for the future of the franchise in my opinion yeah i mean uh I, I think i uh have said this a few times not on this channel obviously but uh you know i've always thought that it'd be great if the series had at some point just like completely drifted away from the tight continuity and just sort of been like standalone stories in the style of saw one and uh that's that's not like exactly what we're uh talking about here but you know I, th I think something like that would be a strong premise yeah agreed and, and they don't and even if they did that I've argued in on this channel that they they could do something like that that is a lot cheaper than making these movies and still explore the characters explore the world and it could be directed video for all I care as long as it's cheap enough and it tries to tell an interesting story i mean i don't care I, I i might be the only person who thinks that i personally like the idea of expanding the universe a little bit more than it otherwise is 
You got all these other franchises that have books and comic books and all the and video games and all this stuff. Not that I guess I, I, I guess Saul has video games, but uh, I, I would I would like for them to put a little bit more effort into it in terms of not just a movie, but what about a TV show? Because that's kind of all the rage right now. They're talking about doing a TV show for Chucky. Tech, well, that one makes sense. Chucky's been. <laughs> A, a solid continuity its entire time. I, I don't think any right. other franchise has gone as long as that one has in terms of how long it's been around and telling one story. It's crazy. I guess the last question I will ask, just based off of this, is are you going to go see it in theaters? No, 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 no. Not not for not because of the failing of the trailer. I think if it were any other time in history, well, you know, not any other time, but you know, uh, I probably would. But uh, you know, with the 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 pandemic and everything, I know that like people are going to be vaccinated for the most part. But you know, we're sp- still supposed to social distance for uh, for a while after and all this. And I I just I'm not quite sold uh, hard enough to risk that. Um, honestly, I mean, as far as um, if we'll be going to see it in theaters, um, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty socially distant as it is. So I feel like I can make it to the theater, keep a mask on, keep away from everyone, hand sanitized. Uh, this is probably the only thing I'll see in theaters this year. Honestly, Fair enough. I live in New York. So this, the, the, they're not quite as, uh, Oh, yeah, oh no, no. God, no, I'm in Colorado. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm in Texas. We've been open pretty much the whole time. It's crazy. Um, oh my god. I, I, yeah, I hate it here. We can't have nice things. Uh, right. But the way I, the way I look at it is kind of similar to Dallas. I've, I've been fairly socially distant. I'm going to be immunized by the time it comes out, and I, I'm going to go see it. The one thing I'm not looking forward to is this is going to be my first theater going experience in a year and I cannot make the fullness of it because I'm I think out of an abundance of precaution people are probably going to think the people who've gotten this far are going to think I'm crazy but I'm not going to take my mask off so he's like you can't get the popcorn or the drink or anything else like yeah, that I just yeah. I just want to see the damn movie so right. <laughs> it, it, it's <laughs> kind of it, that to me that's kind of sad I wish I wish it was a different time and we could I wish we'd already gotten this movie and it was a huge success and we were going to get the next movie in a couple of years, but the world has fallen apart in one way or another over the last year. And I'm, and I, I'm still jaw dropped that Lionsgate is pushing this movie as not only a theater going experience, but they're also pushing it up. I see why they're doing it dollar signs and whatnot and they they've done the same thing with the hitman's bodyguard's wife moving it back to june and like moving that up kind of planning their you know they don't have a streaming service or anything they're kind of saying hey we're going to bring some theater going options as many people get immunized by the summer and we're going to bring in the movie season but my god like it feels very do you want to play a game yeah it's it's it's, it's such a bad idea and 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 it does make me worried that the movie itself isn't going to it's it's not going to perform in the level that they really want it to because they're they're kind of pulling a tenant i hope it's better than tenant i didn't like that movie very much um and some people have said that I'm not smart enough to understand Tenet, and I tell them, no, I understand Tenet, I did not like Tenet. Yeah. There's a difference. There is a, there's a big difference. Um, but anyway, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I'm getting off. I'll make a quick prediction. If, uh, if this does underperform and they don't blame it on COVID, they just say, oh, I guess people don't like Saw anymore or whatever, uh, the next movie that we get in the series is going to be a complete reboot, not even the slightest bit of connection to the previous movies. And it's going to no. be like 10 years later. Yeah, we're going to... No, it's it's going to be a complete... Re- I agree with that. It's going to be... I, I'll, I'll go one further. Not only is all that true, but the next movie we're going to get is going to be by 2025. And it's, it's going to be a complete reboot. It's going to give it four years, complete reboot, completely new thing. Uh, and yeah, or, 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 or 
TV show. Okay, well, I'd be down for that. Yes. Yeah, or a TV show, or I, I don't ever imagine them use it, like going direct to video for this franchise. But still, yeah. it's I I would rather direct a video than a complete reboot. I I just don't even know what you would do with it. I want Netflix mini. I want the same. Hey, a TV series would be great, and if not, I am absolutely on board for from the audio book and from the ebook of Saw after this. Sure, continuing uh, that yeah. story. I, I like from that. <laughs> if if that's what they want to do, then I I you know bring on the wacky connections of Hoffman just sitting around in the bathroom having his like in his thoughts. <laughs> like, that's I, I don't know. Like that's crazy, but it's it's in, that'd be interesting to me or. Or delving into what happened five years ago with Eric Matthews being like a brutal cop and stuff and tying that back into, you know, all this stuff. I don't know. Oh, he trained Hoffman. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, the, the thing is, the movie the movie only needs to make, in order to make headlines, kind of, the movie only needs to make $17.8 million Because that's, I, off the top of my head, I don't really remember, but that's how much the franchise needs in order to make a billion dollars over the course of nine films. Oh yeah, that's big. Uh, and, and, and that's, that's going to be headline grabbing news. So worldwide too. So it, it, it will definitely make more than that. I guess the question is, is, is it going to perform closer to Saul 3d or Saul six? Because Saul six is, it, that would be kind of a disaster, even, even in COVID times. Um, because they're, by genu- general estimates, I think you could say that this movie has to make in order to make people happy. You need Saw 3D numbers, uh, like 135 million a- across all all uh, places. And I don't know. I don't even know if that's possible. Right. Uh-huh. Anyway, uh, thank you all so much for joining me on this. Right, anyway, anyway, thank y'all so much for joining me on this uh, just discussion about the trailer, the franchise, and all this other stuff. I think we've covered some really interesting topics. Uh, uh, for anybody who is interested, there. Uh, for anyone who's interested, my guests and uh, their descript. Uh, yeah. For anyone who's interested, my guests, you, you can go. I, I, now I'm tongue tied. Uh, for anyone for anyone who's interested, you can go down to the description section below to see all the links to my guests. Uh, go check out their YouTube channels as well as their Twitters if you want to give them a follow. Again, uh, and also we are sad that we couldn't have Jacob here to help us discuss this. I'm sure he has a lot of thoughts that he would have shared as well, but maybe we're just going to have to have a conversation with him sometime in the next week or two. Hope everyone is having a fantastic day. Thank you for listening this far. Thank you two for joining me. We're going to talk to you all next time. Bye. Bye. Later, everybody.